Okay, a few things, the housekeeping. I'm really impressed, we've got lots of people in this room. Okay, so for the awardees for tonight's award ceremony, we need you to connect up with your anchors. Um, I, I presume you will all know who those are, but we will be running a pretty sharp, fast show this evening. For those of you who were with us last night, we're on it. So we need you to connect with your anchors. Now, second thing is, it is an important day for us today. It is the day of belief. Um, for those of you who were here last night, one of our exhibition exhibitions we're saying today is Mom's Belief. And I think you need to check them out um, in one of the boots. But today is the day of belief and it's Mom's believing in their children's abilities. So that's what I'm wearing today. Today is the day of belief. Now, before we go into our first keynote speech, I just want your attention for a second because I want to make a point. Uh, Wilfred, who is my great friend of many years doing the Zero Conference, <clears throat> wanted me to do something this morning. <laughs> There's two things that I, or the many things that I can't do. One is I don't see very well. And he enlarged the font on a piece of paper of a whole list of things that he wanted me to read out. And I said to him, I can't see that. And he's like, well, it's 24 font, so of course he can see that. Um, and I could if I put my nose very close to the page, but I really can't see it. But the reason I chose not to see it and use my sight as an excuse is because he was asking me to read out a whole load of German names that I can't do at all. My greatest disability is I do not pronounce things at all well, so I just chose to say that I couldn't see them at all, which I didn't really. So I'm going to ask Wilfred to come up and read all the thank yous that I have chosen not to read. And this is for all the people that have been very important in giving their time and their expertise in making this conference be what it is. So over to Wilfred, who is a real engine behind this conference. Could you please give a round of applause to Wilfred, who is stopping me reading these things out. Thank you, good morning. Uh, you heard yesterday how many accessibility features we tried to implement, and of course we couldn't do this alone. And so we'll do a lot of thank yous, and uh, I would like to start right off with Bernhard Ruschka. Bernhard Ruschka and his team helped us for several years already to do the, flat, the tactile flooring. Please, an applause for them. You see the captioning in the, in the room? These people are spread all over the world. It's done by AI Media. Thank you so much. <laughs> Patricia Brück and her team uh, to my left-hand side for the international sign. Thank you. Peter Plitschke didn't help us only with the graphic facilitations, which you have seen superbly yesterday. She also helped us to prepare. We have five sessions which are focusing on people with learning disabilities, and she helped us to coordinate these sessions. Thank you, Petra. <laughs> our friends at Hilfsgemeinschaft and our graphic uh, person, Christoph Almerschi, did all the signage which you see inside and outside of the rooms. Thank you. And for today, last but certainly not least, Alpurga Fröhlich and the team of Atempo, who did all these fantastic translations into easy language. Thank you so much to Styria. Thank you. And thank you, Wilfred. Okay, so um, just a reminder for people who want audio description. Remember, it's on channel one. I, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that this morning again. I apologize. But it's channel one. Now. We're going to kick off our morning with our first keynote speeches. Um, we are absolutely delighted to welcome into our Zero Project family, Lisa Trigg from the May and Stanley Smith Trust. And accompanying Lisa will be Jennifer uh, Laszlo Mizra from Respectability. And I think this is just the perfect way to start this morning. So Lisa and Jennifer, where are you? Come on up and give us your wisdom, share with us all that you have to share, because you've got, you've got a really good session. Now, I think also what we're gonna try and do is you're gonna do a session, we're gonna try and do some questions and answers if we can get it done in time. That's right. Absolutely brilliant. We're gonna try to talk slow at the same time. Okay, we're going to try and talk slow. Okay, off you go. Now, that's always quite difficult with me. You okay?
that on? Can every, oh, here we go. We're, today, we're excited to share how you can use the entertainment industry and media to support and promote independent living for people with disabilities. We're going to highlight some effective tools that leverage the power of the entertainment industry and the media to promote your message. The critically acclaimed reality TV show, Born This Way, is a prime example of a powerful media tool that promotes the message of the ability of people with disabilities to thrive independently in the community. Born This Way chronicles the lives of a diverse group of seven exciting young men and women with Down syndrome who are defying society's expectations by striking out on their own and pursuing their lifelong dreams, including jobs, housing, health, and even marriage. The widely popular show has earned three Emmy wins including Best Reality Show, and it received the 2018 Critics' Choice Award for Best Unstructured Reality Series. The program is now syndicated internationally, meaning that if you're not seeing it in your country, you can ask your networks to play it. Here is a short trailer from this new show. That's beautiful. More volume, please. Wow. A woman who just got a prenatal diagnosis of Down syndrome could watch this and see, oh my gosh, here's people that date. My son can get married. My child one day will have a job, will have meaningful relationships, and will have an amazing life. Not like, oh, <laughs> I'm eight, though. I, I'm three, too. What do you want people to know about you? I have an extra cortisone in me, but I have a big heart, though. Our dream for them is that they could live as independent as they can. My paycheck. Way to start the day. Being independent is working on our own. Okay. I'm Lisa Trigg, a senior program officer with the May and Stanley Smith Charitable Trust located in San Francisco, and the proud mother of an adult son, Christopher, who's an award-winning baker with disabilities, and a daughter, Jennifer, who's a job coach for adults with disabilities. I'm honored to be here, along with four of the trust grantees who are being recognized at the conference for their best practices. One of those grantees is respectability, and Jennifer here is president of that organization. Respectability is a trailblazer in using media and the Hollywood entertainment industry to help end public stigmas and stereotypes and to advance opportunities for individuals with disabilities to live a more independent life in a fully inclusive community. I met Jennifer and learned about her newly established nonprofit five years ago at a gathering in Washington, D.C. of 25 powerful change makers in the disability field. Jennifer was making a very intriguing argument for using Hollywood's entertainment industry and other national and local media channels to deliver the message of inclusion to the broad public to key national and local government officials, and to the disability community. During our initial conversation, Jennifer cited some very powerful public opinion research results from various polls and other media sources. For example, based on research, and is circled in red on the slide in front of you, People with disabilities are often seen as warm, but not competent. To be effective, it's important to use the right message. Polling shows that using positive messages works, and that talking about how difficult it is for people with disabilities is a losing message. People generally need to hear a message at least seven times to change behavior. 
Jennifer also pointed out that while one in five people have a disability, just 2% of scripted television and film characters are shown as having disabilities. <coughs> Actors without disabilities play more than 95% of characters with disabilities on television. And often the characters are portrayed in a negative and inaccurate light. Jennifer described Respectability's approach to addressing these challenges, which is to strategically work to engage Hollywood and the media to support individuals with disabilities to be more fully accepted and embraced so that they can thrive in the community, independently in the community, and I thought this was an important and powerful strategy. So, I began asking Jennifer more questions, and she cited some specific examples of high-impact media tools that Respectability was using to convey its message, including TV shows such as Born This Way, which was highlighted earlier, movies as such as many shown in the disability-focused Sundance Institute and Real Abilities Film Festivals, which is a part of this conference, with many movies being distributed internationally. Traditional media, such as TV news broadcasts and opinion editorials, otherwise known as op-eds, particularly in national newspapers, and public service announcements as shown on TV. Here's a recent example of a public service announcement that reached a nationwide audience in the United States. Oops, I'm sorry. AV, can you play the video, please? I work. I work, and I want to keep working. When my life changed in an instant. When I needed support. We made a plan. Because we couldn't succeed without it. We made a plan. So I could stay in the game. It wasn't a matter of if I could go back to work. It was a matter of when and how. Because working works. Working works. Working works. America works best when all Americans can work. To learn more, visit whatcanyoudocampaign.org. More than 100 of Respectability's op-eds have appeared in newspapers and on social media across the United States to inform the public about the value that people with disabilities bring in the workplace, in turn supporting their independence and acceptance in the community. Here are just a very few examples on the screen. The op-eds address current problems, celebrate past achievements, and offer suggestions for further change. They're a powerful tool for changing hearts and minds. Respectability has also recently created, published, and distributed a groundbreaking Hollywood Disability Inclusion Toolkit to help entertainment professionals to promote positive, accurate, and diverse portrayals of people with disabilities and to encourage the hiring of more people with disabilities in acting and other Hollywood jobs. Entertainment professionals receiving the toolkit include studio and TV network executives, directors, producers, and writers. Respectability has also collaborated with major media companies, including Disney, ABC Television, NBC Universal, Netflix, and Pixar Animation Studios to provide hands-on training on disability inclusion to its leaders and employees. In short, respectability through Hollywood and the media is helping millions of people see those with disabilities for what they can do instead of what they cannot when they're fully embraced as contributing members of the community. I asked Jennifer to join me to highlight how some of Respectability's unique and very powerful media partnerships and work can be replicated in your community. Jennifer? 
Thank you, Lisa, for your wonderful comments here and for your ongoing partnership with RespectAbility and all your grantees. The Smith Charitable Trust is really paving the way for inclusion around the world. There are so many nonprofits that are stronger, better, and more impactful because of our, your work. For generations, television and movies have represented people with disabilities as objects of pity. From the Jerry Lewis telethon to stories covering school teams as heroes for allowing one child with a disability to play on the quarter field for just a few moments, today's screens have propelled stigmas undermining people who have disabilities. What we see and hear impacts our thoughts and feelings, which can have literally life and death consequences. Our media partnerships are helping to create change. We are grateful to all the companies that we get to work for, and we know that the number of people with disabilities getting acting jobs, thanks to them, has at least doubled since last year. The impact of media also has contributed to a major expansion of new jobs for people with disabilities in the United States. The Good Doctor is one example that is starting to be seen around the world. It is an example of positive portrayal of an individual with a disability who lives independently. The show features a doctor with autism. It was the hottest new show for its opening season. And before we go to the trailer, I want to have full disclosure and say that the star of the show does not have autism. We would prefer that the star had autism, but the challenges of a series regular is so acute that we want to be sure the portrayal is really outstanding. And you see with The Good Doctor that the animation you will see on screen is all made by people with autism who are doing computer graphics for this show and many others. And several of the other co-stars stars who have come into the show are indeed actors with autism. Again, this was the number one show in the United States of America. Cue the video, please. Sean has a uniquely gifted mind. He faces challenges most of us could never imagine. Like every one of us, he's made mistakes. But he sees things and has insights that are truly remarkable. Sean gives people hope, including me. I'm Dr. Sean Murphy. The media is a for-profit industry, and they respond to market forces. Respectability is delivering the message to major media studios that helping to open the inclusion umbrella is not only the right thing to do, but it is also profitable, since given that the buying power of the disability market segment is valued, according to Nielsen, at least a trillion dollars just in the United States. You can, oops, next slide. You can adapt your, our approach for your own community. Public opinion research is vital so you know what the best message is to move people who are not already with us. You need to find those positive messages that work. And then you must find the most cost-effective way to repeat those messages over and over again in front of your target audience. It can be entertainment or news media, whatever works in your country. But we found in the United States that utilizing the entertainment and news media industries is the most cost-effective way to break stigmas. And you can do this with traditional and social media. No matter where you live, you can do this too. Indeed. We have a free webinar that you can see and on our website and that will hopefully help you in getting your own work done. No matter where you live, you can do this too. Okay. So, you don't have to be in Hollywood to make a difference. 
Every community has someone with a disability who can partner with you to share a story of success through the news or other media. Here's a powerful example. Ali Cantos is blind, and he adopted triplets who are also blind. They became Eagle Scouts. Now, they are all freshmen in college and have part-time jobs. Here is their widely televised story. Whatever it is, you know, there, there are no limits. The only the limits that you set in your mind. I feel like I'm the proudest dad on the face of the earth. Blindness doesn't have to limit us in terms of what is possible for our success. I got to help a lot of people, which is which is really what what, what uh, was my first achievement. I will say that Ole Cantos is one of our board members at Respectability, and that we feel it's very important that the boards and the staff of disability organizations have the power, impact, and personal knowledge of people with lived disability experience. Indeed, it needs to be a people with a variety of disabilities from a variety of backgrounds. Another way that you, no matter where you live, can positively influence the news cycle is by engaging political candidates in a nonpartisan way, asking them questions about disability policy at town hall meetings. We believe that it is not enough just to guarantee access to voting. You need to have someone and something to vote for that is good for the disability community, and that means you need to meet them early when they're starting their campaigns and make sure that their policies are solid. No matter where you live, you can get the media to help us, those of us in the disability community and our allies, in our shared agenda, advancing opportunities and independence for people with disabilities. I encourage you to visit our website, respectability.org, which has an array of tools, resources, and solutions. We're always looking for partners. We're honored and delighted to be here with the Essel Foundation, with more than 700 people from more than 87 countries who all of us share the same commitment to a better future and independence for people with disabilities worldwide. Thank you very much. What a great opening. Thank you both so much. Jennifer and Lisa, will you come down and we might see if we can do some questions. We have a few minutes. So I think there's probably, there's so much. I have to say, I think your work is fantastic. Just want to say it's fantastic. Come up here. Uh, we'll see if we can have questions. So I'm going to hand both of you a mic. There you go. Thank you. Now, is there anybody here in the audience who would like to ask a question? Remember, I don't see. So could we make some noise and we can find you? If there's anybody who would like to, to have a question, we can have a conversation. In the back. Oh, we have somebody in the back. Okay. Shall I just go down there? Is there anybody who can run a mic or I can do run a mic? Let me do that. You oh. know, I'll, I'll run the mic. I'll run with you. Come on, let's we'll go. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Are you ready? One. Okay, let's go. Okay, where is the question? Okay, great. Thank you. You, you. you have no idea about my urge to run down that side as you were running up. <laughs> it, was, it was really weird. I just wanted to know if you'd had any success in engaging with media industry outside of the States, where perhaps other cultural values are in place uh, and a different legacy to build upon. Uh, I just wonder what work had happened outside of the US. So here, here's the secret. The question was, have we worked in other countries? So respectability has not worked on disability issues so much globally, but I myself personally have worked in 22 different countries doing media, including here in Austria, where I was a strategist for the Social Democrats in Gusenbauer's campaign against Jörg Haider. And so I know that these same techniques literally work everywhere. And I will also tell you that my father is from Vienna. 
and that when the Nazis came, that they were voted into power after they said they wanted to eliminate all Jews and all people with disabilities. That was part of their political platform in this spectacular city. And so the fact that the Essel Foundation and this conference is here, 80 years after people voted in literally killing people with disabilities, it's so powerful to me personally. And I'm wearing a Star of Judah because I remember my family history. <clears throat> that no matter what country you are in, the media matters. Because Hitler did not come to power in Austria by bullets. He came by the ballot box. And every person with disabilities must claim their political power. You must know your reporters no matter where that you live. And it's not important who you know. It is important who knows you. You can do this no matter where you live. But the key is to always be factually accurate to make it easy for the journalists to do it, to recognize that they're busy and they're on tight deadlines and they need you to give them sound bites. But the smallest country with the smallest budget, I was so impressed yesterday with people from Cambodia and Ecuador doing so much with so little, even when a minute school budget, you can do this with the reporters in your place. Find your Oli Cantos the people with disabilities who are succeeding, and lift them up as role models, because if you see it, you can believe it, and when you believe in it, you can be it, you can do it. You can do this no matter where you are. I'm here to control Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I hate, no. Yeah, come we, on. We committed to the time. Thank you. I can't say enough about going to their website. There's a reason that I fund them. Um, it's just phenomenal, the results they've had, but that they are sharing their best practices and in such an extraordinary way on their website. I cannot encourage you more about going to visit their website. We'll be around. So you're on the whole, you're on right till tomorrow, both of you? Um, yes. yes. So find us and we're happy to talk more, but and we want to respect the time. as well. Yes. She so, is. Okay. Brilliant. All Can right. I just thank you big, so much. Thank you both, Lisa and Jennifer. And thank you for the run down the room. That was great. High five to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Ah, you see, what a great way to start the morning. I have two mics. Okay. Right. We have one more keynote speech this morning. So let me just try and see if I can get my eyesight going here. Georgette Muller from the Lumos Foundation, of course. Please, a round of applause to Georgette. And I think Georgette is bringing Pavel. Hey, hello. <laughs> How are you? Great to see you. Lovely to see you. Would you like to this speak from Pavel. here, Pavel? We're going to sit Pavel. down on the, on the couch. No here. problem. Off you go. Thank you so much. Thank We're all about the mics this morning. We've loads of mics. Right. Do you want to sit next to next you? Next to, I think it's you. Easy. No, no, next to Pavel. Yes, me. Okay, of course. Okay. Um, so thank you, first of all, Caroline, and thank you to um, our previous keynote speakers. What a way to start the day, um, and what inspirational work. I just wanted to say, first of all, that it is always an absolute honor and a privilege to be here at the Zero Conference. What Jennifer said, I echo, but I will also confess that as a chief executive, I hate conferences, and I avoid them as much as I possibly can. The one that I always try to come to is Zero Project, because it isn't a conference. It is inspiration. It is an opportunity to learn things we didn't know from each other. And it's part of a movement where we really can, every year, see the progress that we're making, even in these extraordinarily difficult times that we, we are in across the globe. I think that what is happening in the disability movement is a beacon of hope for the future. And the Zero Project makes such a huge contribution to that. And it gives me hope. So thank you to Martin and Michael and everybody for that. So I'm Chief Executive of the Lumos Foundation, and we work to end the institutionalization of children globally with many, many partners around the world. And I'm here today with Pavel Polak from the Czech Republic. 
And, um, in fact, Pavel really is going to do most of the talking because he's got much more to say than I have. So, so I'd like to start by asking you a question, Pavel, if that's okay. Can you tell us why you're here today? Uh, já jsem Pavel. Mm. Jsem tady kvůli tomu, aby jsem můj názor dal víc a sdělil prostě, protože si myslím, že můj názor je důležitý. Hello, I'm Pavel and I'm here because I would like to share my opinion with you because I think it's very important. A, jo. A jsem z výchovního ústavu a když mě vzali z domu od mámy, tak um, jsem myslel, že to bude fajn. Uh, I've been to live in children's home and when they took me off my mother, I thought maybe it will be better for me. A po chvilce jsem si myslel, že to nebylo fajn, protože rodina chybí a to láska, to bez lásky není dětství, takže jsem si myslel, že to, o, protože ústavu, když jste, tak to hrozně chybí, protože ta láska a to pouto. A já za sebe si myslím, že každý dítě by mělo mít doma a mělo by mít o, lásku a pouto. But after that, I just uh, found out that I was missing love, because in the institution there is no love. And uh, I think that each child needs needs love because without love there is no childhood. Protože si myslím, že i s postižením je je jiný přístup, nejsou to jako rodiče, protože my jsme děti a mají se chovat k nám jako dos, prostě dětem a chovají se k nám jako um, jako prostě, kdyby jsme byli jenom nějaký lidi a kde jsme a vůbec, vůbec jim nevadí, jestli dostaneme zákazy nebo tak. Uh, because in the institution, the carers, I think they don't treat us as a children, as a children with uh, special needs, with uh, with some disabilities. They maybe um, took us as some things, just things, but not not as a children. A já za sebe chci říct, že chci pomáhat dět, dětem, aby byli víc pestonský péče a Chci, aby ty děti byly doma, protože to nikdo nesm- už nechce zažít jako já, aby ty děti zažili to. And from my perspective, I'm, uh, I'm here because I want to help all these children, because I don't want them to experience the same thing as I did uh, while I was in an institution. And I would love to uh, support foster families, foster parents, and uh, I think it's good that all children should have their own parents or families. Chci, aby se mě zeptat, George, proč jsi se rozhodla dělat tuto práci? Je to náročný? And now I would love to have a question for George. George, why have you decided to work for Lumos? I think it must be very difficult. Um, So, Pavel, the reason I decided to do the work I do is because 25 years ago I went into my first orphanage in Romania. I was a very young social worker and um, I witnessed from the adult perspective what you were experiencing as a child. So, um, although you had a difficult start in life, you remember your mother and you were saying to me last night how important that relationship with your mother was and how much you've missed it in the institution. I saw um, rows upon rows of newborn babies lying in cots, staring into space, who essentially, because of the lack of that love of a parent, were being destroyed. I saw children who were born without disabilities acquire disabilities because of the neglect and the lack of love. And I saw children without, with disabilities, born with disabilities, whose disabilities became a reason to not invest in them in any way whatsoever. 
Um, and I saw an entire generation of children who were denied the basic human conditions that all of us need to survive. Um, and I saw that this was called a system of care, that it had been put in place allegedly to care for children and to provide protection and was doing the opposite. I could also see that nearly all of these children had living parents and that the main reasons they were in the institution were related to poverty and discrimination. So this was an unnecessary system and it was severely harming children. And I knew there had to be another way. So that's why I have joined Lumos 11 years ago, because I know that there is a way to create a world in which no child ever has to experience living in an institution. Um, so, Pavel, this is your first year at Zero Conference, and I'd love to hear what's been the most important thing that you've learned here so far. Za mě jsem se naučil, že Lumos, náš tým Moldavy a Bulharsko, Um, jsou skvělí, protože se dáváme, dáváme různé názory a ty názory pak uh, dáváme do kupy. A... Uh, from my perspective, I've learned in Lumos as our international team of self-advocates from Moldavia, Bulgaria and Czech Republic, uh, we try to uh, put our opinions all together. Uh, myslím si, že za, za mě ten tým je super, protože uh, nehádáme se a vždycky se dohodneme na ten správný názor, co chceme. A vždycky je to dlouhý, ale zvládáme to. Uh, I think that we are a super team, because we don't argue and we always agree on the same opinion or the way we want to express our views. Uh, sometimes it takes a long time, but we all agree. Jsem rád tady, že můžu tady být a slyšet jiný názory o všech, o všechny, co jsou tady. And I'm happy to be there, because then I can, uh, I can listen to you, I can hear uh, your different perspectives and different opinions from you all. And one of the things that you've been discussing as self-advocates is what you want the European politicians to do. So would you like to tell us a little bit about what you would like the European politicians to do? Já si myslím, že pro mě je nejlepší mít pěstounský péče, protože si myslím, že je to důležitý, protože ty děcka mají být v rodině a já podle mě jeho by se jim i pomohl podporit, podpořit a naučit je pracovat um, s dětma a tak, i s postižením. Okay. Uh, I think the politicians should support foster parents, because I think it's the most important thing that all children can be in families. And I would like to train them all uh, to learn them how to work even with the children with disabilities and not to be afraid of them. Can you tell me why you think, um, I'm just asking another question if that's all right on this, why, why you think foster families are so important for children with disabilities? Protože si myslím, že rodina, a já s tím budu podávat říkat rodina, protože když někdo odejde, je v děcáku a sebere ho od malička, tak je to hrozně těžký, protože chybí fakt tam ta láska. A já za sebe prostě chci, aby děti byly v pěstonský nebo doma, jakoukoliv. Ale chci, aby byly doma, protože tu lásku potřebu a podporu a všeho. Mm -hmm. 
because I just think that uh, the family, and it doesn't depend if it's biological family or a foster family, but uh, I think that's the most important because there is love. And when I was in the institution, even I had mother before, so then I just didn't have a love. And I think that's the way because there is some uh, attached, the child needs to be attached to, to, to the parent. So the reason that I asked you to um, give us a little more of your thoughts on that is because um, the experts, if you like, around Europe are really aware that one of the biggest services that is missing in many countries is foster care for children with disabilities. And so it was very striking for me <clears throat> that in your day yesterday, the last couple of days, that this had been an issue that had come up for you and the other young self-advocates who are here. And so it just, for me, is another example of how um, we can have all the research in the world and all the great experts in the world, but if we really just ask children and young people, we'll cut through um, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, red tape, shall we say, and we, we'll save a lot of time. Je pro tebe těžký naštěvovat všechny země a vidět děti v ústavech? George, I would like to ask you if it was difficult for you to visit all these countries and see all the children there in the institutions. Um, <clears throat> it's difficult in one sense because um, the terrible things that happen to children in institutions are difficult to see. And I've worked in 32 countries now. Um, and so I have seen some really terrible things. I, I told you about Romania, um, but I've also seen in, in countries children with disabilities who are left, who have eating and drinking difficulties and who, who are dying of starvation, not because there isn't enough food, but because not enough time is given by staff to ensure that they can eat their meal. I have seen children being sold into institutions, uh, children being kidnapped from their parents into institutions just to provide an opportunity for international volunteers who would like to volunteer in an orphanage. Um, I have seen so many terrible things done to children, but I've also seen the incredible power and strength of children and families um, in so many countries around the world and I've also seen the amazing um, fight that, uh, that goes on and the amazing strength of self-advocates, of parents uh, uh, who are advocates, and also of some really brave politicians and civil servants. Um, and all over the world, there are so many people fighting to end institutionalization. And when I see children return to families or placed in foster families and we see the way they flourish, this just gives me so much hope because I know that this is possible for the millions and millions of children currently who are not in families. Um, there are so many countries that face all kinds of difficulties and yet are managing to address the issue of children in institutions as well. One of the most recent examples is Jordan and under the leadership of His Royal Highness Prince Mired and his colleagues at the Higher Council for People with Disabilities, we're seeing a huge change go on in Jordan and there is now a law in place for people with disabilities and there is a national action plan drafted and ready to go so that if the donors, if the European politicians um, and other politicians who have um, international aid can provide support to the Jordanian government, they will be able to end institutionalization for all children and adults in the next 10 years. And that's just one example of many, many countries. And if we think about Jordan and all of the challenges that it faces with huge influx of refugees because of the war, um, with its own internal challenges, and yet it is managing to push forward this change. So that's what 
I feel when I go to many countries is I just feel great hope because of the um, incredible work that is being done by so many people to fight to end a problem that most of the world doesn't even know exists. And I just want to ask you, Pavel, do you have any final words or any final message you would like to give to everybody here at Zero Project? Já si myslím za sebe, já si myslím za sebe, že lidi by měli rozhodovat správně a naše hlasy jako jsou hrozně velký a hrozně pracujeme na tom, aby ty dětské domovy nebyly a můj cíl je opravdu, aby ty děti byly doma a měly lásku a ne pořád se baví se o tom hrozně dlouho, řeší se to u nás v České republice hrozně dlouho a stejně se s tím moc nenadělá, protože to se bojí lidi o tom mluvit a já takovou to cítím. Uh, I think adults should do good decisions, should decide uh, right. Uh, but I think that we as self-advocates, young people, we are very strong and we try uh, to have powerful opinions. And for example, in Czech Republic, we would like to change it. But uh, I think that these problems are solved many ages, very long time, but actually nothing really happens like in uh, action <laughs> and uh, yeah so so i think it, it should be really changed and the children should not be in the institutions anymore thank you georgia and pavel and your name and Zlaka, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. And before you stand away... Um, I don't know about you, but this morning, and I think uh, George actually said it better than anyone, and Pavel, actually, you started and you opened. Love. Yeah. Love. So I think this morning we've seen it, whether it's in media, whether it's in story, whether it's in respect, whether it's in fostering love, family, it's love. Um, and I think that's always at the heart of the Zero Project uh, and conference. I want to say a very, very special thank you to everybody for what was a really beautiful morning to respectability and to Lisa and to Jennifer and to Georgette and Pavel. Um, and to all of us for coming up this morning, and also to Alito for the beautiful dance and movement. What a great way to begin. Now you're going off into the world of parallel sessions. I want to make sure that you've all got your tokens for lunch. Remember, lunch opens between 11.30 and 2, to make sure you get your sandwiches. This evening, we have a great award ceremony. Um, so we're back in this room together at 6.30. So, and we have fabulous keynote speeches. Um, so please come back with all of your energy on. Remember, have the conversations. Enjoy yourselves. We're all here to help. Um, and if there's any questions that you have, you'll see myself or any of the team around the room. But back in here for 6.30, yes. off you go. Well. See you later, guys.